Hey everyone, this is Nick, and if you're using Linux as your desktop, or if you just like free software, chances are you're using LibreOffice as your Office suite. And chances are you also wished it worked more like Microsoft Office, or it was more compatible with Microsoft Office formats. Hey, Microsoft's formats are open, it's not their fault if they implement them in a way that basically makes them incompatible with the way their own standard is written. Still, today is your lucky day, because we're going to look at a ton of ways we can make LibreOffice more compatible with Microsoft Office and work more like it. And no, it's not just moving to the tabbed interface. There's a lot more that we can do. So let's get started right after I tell you how today's sponsor can help you monitor and secure your internet connection. This video is sponsored by Safing. Safing makes the Portmaster an open source tool to take back control of your internet connection. It's free of charge and it lets you see every connection every application makes. And it lets you act on these connections by blocking ads and trackers, malware, not safe for work stuff or scams with auto blocking capabilities and even the ability to use a DNS provider of your choice. You can of course create your own rules globally or per application. Portmaster is available as a DEB or an RPM package, it's in the AUR, or you can also install it on Windows. Using it is free of charge and they have paid tiers, starting at 3 euros per month to support the development, or 9.9 euros per month if you want the total package, including the SPN, which is a VPN on steroids that uses a different IP address for every connection, so you're truly impossible to track. So click the link in the description to download the Portmaster. So remember how I said it wasn't going to be just moving to the tabbed interface in LibreOffice? Well, we're still going to look at how to do that because by default, LibreOffice is more Office 2003 than modern Microsoft Office. And while it's fine for some people, most people are now used to the ribbon interface. Now, fortunately, this is super easy to do in LibreOffice. Just open any of the applications of the suite. Here it's LibreOffice Writer. Click on the View menu, then User Interface. By default, it's the standard menu bar and toolbar combo. But if you click on Tabbed, you'll see that you can now use a ribbon interface, just like what Microsoft Office uses. There are other options as well, like a single toolbar for smaller screens, a sidebar, more like what IBM Lotus did back in the day, a compact tabbed variant that will be reminiscent of Microsoft Office Online, and grouped bars, which puts the menu bar underneath groups of icons. Now, for our purposes here, select Tabbed and click Apply to All. This will make the ribbon interface the default for all LibreOffice programs of the suite, so you don't have to repeat this action for each app. Why this isn't the default yet, I don't really know, because I'm pretty sure that most people are now used and are learning an Office suite with a ribbon interface, which was introduced with Office 2007, so 15 years ago. But hey, at least you've got the option. Next, we'll look at the icons. Depending on your system and your theme, and whether you use dark mode or not, it's possible that your icons can be black on a black background and illegible. We can change that as well. From the tabbed interface, click the main menu in the top right corner and select Options. Then click the View menu and in the Theme drop-down menu you will have plenty of options. Breeze is the default, but if you want something that looks more like Microsoft Office, select Colibra or Sukapura. If you want something more like Gnome, select the Elementary theme. And if you want something symbolic, the Cipher theme is for you. You can also change the icon size in the notebook bar drop-down if everything feels too small. The SVG variants of these icon themes will be useful, for example, if you use fractional scaling, as the icons will scale better. And there are dark variants if you use dark mode to make icons more legible on a black background. So just try them out, click apply to see how they look, and pick the one you prefer. They will apply to all programs in the suite. And finally, if you really want to push it, you can also reorder any of the icons from any of the tabs of the ribbon. Click the main menu again and then customize. Then click the notebook bar tab. Here you will see the target drop down menu that lets you select which tab you want to change. You can uncheck icons you don't want to see or reorder them by drag and drop. If you want, you can spend some time reordering the icons to be exactly in the same order as Microsoft Office. 
I personally would not do it because it feels like a big waste of time, but if there are two or three actions that don't really feel well placed and you want to keep your muscle memory, you can always change them. And you can also change keyboard shortcuts in the keyboard tab. Okay, now that this is out of the way, let's make LibreOffice more usable. First are the fonts. If you're using LibreOffice on Windows, chances are you already have the Microsoft fonts installed. If you're on Linux though, they're probably not there. And you'll probably want to use these fonts just to make sure that the documents you create or the ones you edit respect the formatting. By default, Linux and LibreOffice use almost compatible fonts, which are almost exactly the same, but not perfectly pixel perfect. So you will need the Microsoft fonts to ensure that the formatting isn't lost or moved around. To install Microsoft fonts, you'll generally have a package in your distro's repositories, provided you enable the non-free software repos. The package is generally called ttf-mscorefonts or ttf-mscorefonts-installer. On Ubuntu or Ubuntu-based distros, for example, you can open a terminal and run sudo apt install ttf-mscorefonts-installer. If you're using an Arch-based distro, you can find it in your graphical package manager through the AUR. And for Fedora, I left a link in the description of the video. Once you have the fonts installed, LibreOffice should detect them automatically. If that's not the case, quit all LibreOffice apps and reopen them. Now you can open Office documents without messing up the formatting. And if you want to use these fonts by default, you can configure that as well. Click the main menu, then options. Then go to the name of the app you're using, here it's LibreOffice Writer, and select the Basic Fonts tab. Here you can change the defaults to the font you prefer, like Calibri or Times New Roman or Comic. And now let's apply a few tweaks to make sure that documents you create or edit are as compatible with Microsoft Office as possible. First, you will want to enable all compatibility features. To do that, open the main menu, then Options. In the Load and Save tab, click on Microsoft Office and make sure all the checkboxes are ticked. Generally, they all are, apart from the Smart Art one, which you should also check. Next, in Writer, if you want to ensure that forms you create are fully Word compatible, open the Options menu again, then the LibreOffice Writer tab and the Compatibility tab. Click the Reorganize Form menu to have it Microsoft Compatible checkbox and also tick the Word Compatible Trailing Blanks checkmark so LibreOffice automatically adds a space after a paragraph, like Microsoft Word does. Next, if you interact with Microsoft Office users a lot, you will want to send them documents using the Office formats. Click on the General tab of the Load Save panel, and in Always Save As, select Word 2007 365 docx. Then, in the Document Type dropdown, you can select Spreadsheet, and change the Always Save As field to Excel 2007 365 XLSX and you can repeat that step for presentations and the PPTX format. This means that all your future documents that you create using LibreOffice will use the Microsoft Office formats. Now, personally, I prefer the ODF open document formats because they are technically the standard everyone should use and technically Microsoft Office is able to open them but since everyone mostly uses Microsoft Office formats, it's probably easier to just change the default for you for what you create. You will also get an annoying pop-up when saving using these formats. You can disable it by unchecking the Warn when not saving in ODF or default format checkbox in the same settings page we used previously. Now, if you also had custom styles and templates that you used in Microsoft Office, you can also import them into LibreOffice. Just click the File tab in Writer and then Templates. There, click the Manage button in the top right corner and click Import. Then you can select Templates, Presentations or Styles. Click the one you want, then OK, and you will get a file picker to go grab your templates or your styles. If you're using Windows, by default, these are located in your C drive, in Users, your username, App Data, Roaming, Microsoft, and then templates or quick styles for styles. And that's also where you can grab them if you want to make a backup of them. Now let's take a look at extensions. LibreOffice lets you install extensions to add features to the suite. You can head over to extensions.libreoffice.org to view a full list. There are plenty of excellent ones, including Alt Search, which is a more powerful find and replace tool for LibreOffice Writer, you have multi-save, which lets you save files in multiple formats at once, like a PDF and a Microsoft format, for example. 
or one of the most useful to check for compatibility, called Pepito Cleaner. This will open a window with a list of all formatting mistakes in your document. There's also Transcriber, which lets you have play and pause buttons from media files inside of LibreOffice, which means you can transcribe an interview without switching apps back and forth all the time. For LibreOffice Calc, you have LibreWeb, which lets you fill the cells of your spreadsheet with data sourced from a web page. Or Calendar, which opens a calendar pop-up to let you select a date range and add it in ISO format. There are a ton of other great extensions in their extensions portal. And there are also document templates for cover letters or resumes or everything else in between. So check the link in the description to see what you might want to install or add. Now to install extensions, download them from the extensions portal and you will get a .ext file. Then in LibreOffice, click the extensions tab, then the extensions menu and extension manager. Click the add button and go find your .ext file to import it. After that, these extensions will all display their commands in the extensions tab. Even with all these tweaks and changes, you need to know that LibreOffice will not be 100% fully compatible with all Microsoft Office documents, especially for complex ones like giant reports with tons of features or super complex data sheets, there will be discrepancies and that's pretty normal. But still, it should give you a very nice experience for simpler documents like the one you regularly exchange with other coworkers. If you want to check the exact differences between Microsoft Office and LibreOffice, there's a super complete table that points out all of them. I left a link to it in the description below. Generally, Writer is very, very compatible with Word. You shouldn't get major issues. Impress is also very nicely compatible with PowerPoint, but Calc will have the biggest differences with Excel. And also, remember, these Office formats are meant to be edited. If what you want the person to do is just read or sign, send a PDF. Now you're sure that it's always, always compatible, and that's what it's made for. Still, LibreOffice is probably one of the most feature complete and compatible options to replace Microsoft Office. But there are other options. OnlyOffice is open source and generally more compatible with Microsoft formats, but it doesn't have as many features as LibreOffice. You can also use WPS Office or FreeOffice, which both boast perfect Microsoft Office compatibility, at least on paper, but they're not open source. I have a video comparing and listing all these alternatives to Microsoft Office. I left a link to it in the description or in the card up top. I think it's right there for YouTube viewers. So hopefully this video will help you ensure that LibreOffice documents you create or edit are as compatible with Microsoft Office as possible. And also it will help ensure that you don't send broken stuff to your coworkers too often. And today's sponsor will ensure that you have a Linux compatible desktop or laptop. Tuxedo is a German company that ships worldwide a wide range of devices that are pre-installed with Linux. And the reason you might want that is because it ensures that your device is compatible with Linux. Compare that to buying any old Windows laptop or desktop and praying, crossing your fingers and, and hoping and researching to ensure that everything runs. Well, with Tuxedo, you don't have to worry about that. You just slap your distro and it runs because the components were picked to be compatible with Linux. And they have devices for every price point and for every need with plenty of customization options for the SSD, the RAM, the CPU, the GPU. You can get your own custom keyboard laser etched on the keys. So if you want a specific layout, you can get that. You can get your own logo laser etched as well on the lid of your laptop. It's just great. So if you need a new device, you want to support Linux development, you want to make sure that what you buy runs Linux well, click the link in the description below and get yourself a tuxedo laptop or desktop. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Just click like, click subscribe, click the bell, leave a comment. And if you didn't like the video, well, you can also click dislike and tell me why down there in the comments. And if you want to help support the channel, there's a super thanks button down there on YouTube. There's a PayPal link in the description of the video. And there are links to my Patreon memberships and YouTube memberships. Both get access to a weekly podcast on Monday where I talk about Linux, tech, open source, my personal life, the channel, my interests. And you also get to vote on the next topics that I'll cover on the channel. So both links are in the description. And in the meantime, thanks everyone for watching. And I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.